Detroiters always going somewhere, forever intent on getting about. Of course, it would save a lot of time and trouble for all hands if we just stay put. But it seems that when a man's home, he has to go to work. And after a man gets through with his work, he has to go home or anyhow somewhere. Now, although we think of our town as the hub of the automobile world, still, it might be well to remember, certainly while looking at this particular picture, that there are a million two hundred thousand riders on the DSR streetcars and buses every day getting about safely, rapidly, and economically. Detroit has been in the transportation business only since 1922. Since the city took over the lines, our growth in area and in population has been vast. But the DSR has done a great job of meeting the situation. What goes on back of the scenes should be of interest to every Detroiter. Take the Highland Park property as an example. Here are 30 acres of yards for storing cars and also more than four acres of floor space in the shops. 300 men are employed here in shop work, and a couple hundred others are at work in the Baker, Wyoming, Coolidge, Gratiot, Shoemaker, and Jefferson car house. Maybe it never occurred to you that streetcars must be inspected regularly if they are to deliver the high standard of service demanded by the DSR. At intervals, a powerful hydraulic jack is placed under the car, and up go 16,000 pounds of streetcar. Wouldn't that come in handy when you have to change a tire on a country road? Well, then the truck is rolled out, and the business of reconditioning the trolley has begun. The heart of a streetcar, like that of an automobile or a bus, is the motor, and it is removed first. It is the armature that concerns the streetcar serviceman, not cylinders, spark plugs, and pistons. Nor does the DSR farm out its overhauling of this essential part. Instead, it is done right here by specialists. There are many armatures in the streetcar, from little fellows on which the wire is wound on a lathe, to this big one, a driving motor. Within each of those white cables are wire strands laid together to form the winding. The armature is the rotating part of the motor that constitutes a means of generating the electric motive force. Another part that must be serviced is the resistor placed between the control box and the motor. Insulators in each section must be intact to keep performance efficient. These streetcar men don't need to worry much about punctures and blowouts, but they are concerned with the wheels, which, after all, must make contact with the rails if the car is going to get about. So this portion of the shops is concerned with the essential matter of inspecting wheels. When metal touches metal, there is wear, and now and then the flange of a wheel reveals even a piece broken off. That wheel is then placed in a welder, and new metal is added by fusion to build up the defective portion. Then the axle and the two wheels are secured in a giant lathe that grinds away the surplus metal. The final operation is to smooth the wheel in another grinder to shape the flange so the wheel is ready again for the rails. Now that our wheels have been reconditioned, it might be a good idea to take a look at the axle. And sure enough, there's one that needs our attention right this minute, for it is scored. So it is chucked in a lathe and ground down, which just about clears up the whole matter of axles, and we move directly into the smithy. To make this blacksmith shop complete, all it needs is a spreading chestnut tree. Here, the mighty men bang away in an anvil chorus, pounding out parts for streetcars, brake rods, brake rigging, and other odds and ends that you and I never see, but that are pretty essential to a streetcar. And those are calipers, not ice tongs. When the city purchased the street railway lines, at least a third of the rolling stock consisted of old and out-of-date cars, many of them in such states of disrepair that it was necessary to junk them. The new management decided that a municipally owned system must take some pride in its equipment because, in a way, every car is a traveling representative of the city government. Several hundred new cars were bought, and those cars are kept spick and span by a year-round program of spray painting, striping, and varnishing. About 400 cars are completely done over every year. Nor is that all the effort expended in the cause of cleanliness. Each car is swept out every day, and each car is given a comprehensive bath on this shower rack twice a week. Just another way of creating rider appeal. But of course, we'd all rather ride in a clean car than in a dirty one. After the trolley has been run back and forth in the spray, then the window washers go to work. Where are you going, boy? Here, come back here. Get to work shining up those windows. They never would get anything done around here if I weren't on the job to watch them. Now, here's quite a device. 
sort of a turntable that doesn't turn. Perhaps you'd call it a shuttle. Anyhow, the car weighing 18 tons with the trucks is run on the movable platform that delivers it where it's needed. Maybe you'd like to know just how the street railway department stands financially. Well, the lines were purchased for $18 million, and there were bond issues of $36.5 million, a total of $53.5 million of bonded and contractual indebtedness. Since 1922, the department has reduced its indebtedness by $13.5 million and also has a sinking fund of better than $9 million to reduce obligations when they become due. So now, after 13 years of municipal operation, the railway system has a plant value of $60 million and a debt of only $31 million from an original investment of $53.5 million. Those are big figures, and I don't understand them very well either. But the experts say we're getting along splendidly with our streetcar system. More important to you and to me is the fact that we do have clean cars that run frequently and rapidly and cheaply and help us in getting about. Perhaps you don't know what makes our streetcars run. Well, it isn't so simple a matter as winding up a rubber band. Here in this city-owned powerhouse is created the energy that pushes the trolleys along the tracks. In one year, 112,000 tons of coal are burned. A drag scraper moves the coal from the yards where it is stored to an endless belt conveyor that carries the fuel to the bunkers at the rate of 200 tons an hour. The heat maintained in the boilers is 2,600 degrees, a little hotter than you need to make good burnt toast. These boilers are operated automatically from a control board that maintains the steam at 